Welcome. It's day three of our seven day challenge, building our creative confidence so that we can love what we create. In day three, we are going to talk about developing our own unique style. One of the biggest struggles I hear from students is how can I begin to to develop and begin developing and creating my own style, you know, that so that it looks like me. Let's talk about it. Hello, my name is Krista. I am a full-time artist focusing on portrait painting, also landscapes, and I also love helping others see their creative amazingness and potential too. So I have to say, finding your style in voice, this is definitely a journey and it can be difficult to analyze, to see, and to feel. Developing our own artistic style is a captivating but difficult, sometimes frustrating journey, a path paved with experimentation, exploration, taking chances, taking risks, self-discovery, and the possibility of finding your own voice. But how do we cultivate that? How do we allow our unique artistic voice to come forward and show off our style? How do we do that? So there's a book that I, and I read a lot of books, but there's one book that I found uh, really helpful uh, within my creative growth. And that's called, it's called Steal Like an Artist. And it's by Austin Kleon. I think, I hope I pronounced his last name correctly. And I want to share a few quotes before I get started that spoke to me while I was rereading the book. All right. So I have my iPad here and I have the book <laughs> on my, um, digitally. I don't have the physical book, but I just wanted to share a few things um, that really spoke to me. And it's a great book. It's really visual. It's fun to read. It's easy to follow. It's not heavy and deep. Um, And it's, it's very visual. There's a lot of doodling and it's an easy read for creatives. Um, it was created by a creator um, who understands the creative's mind and how we think and how we follow things. So great book. If you haven't read it, please. It is a great, great resource um, and a, it, it a piece of guidance and support that can help you within your creative journey. Um, So he says, nothing is original. We all find inspiration, motivation. We all find our voice through others, really. Um, And so, so what he says is what a good artist understands is that nothing comes from nowhere. All creative work builds on what came before. Nothing is completely original. So our creative, what we do, we take classes, we see what other artists do, we see the Mona Lisa, we see the um, you know, some of the famous paintings, and we try to emulate that. We try to see if we can get there. And there's nothing wrong with that, but we can gain experience and inspiration from all those ideas. We get ideas from others, other people's ideas. Um, this is in, in the same, in the same page here, it says, as the French writer, Andra, Andre, guide, G-I-D-E, puts it, everything that needs to be said has already been said. But since no one was listening, everything must be said again. And I love that because we are all always regurgitating or releasing again and again. Music tends to, you know, what was once in and became out, becomes in again. Fashion was was what was in, 
is now out and maybe back in in 10 years. So things kind of work in cycles and circles. And so um, our ideas, our influences, things that inspire us um, come from other ideas, maybe from the past, maybe from your neighbor. Um, they come from everywhere. So we gain our knowledge through the environment around us. All right, so I'm going to share a few, a few more quotes here. Um, here's a quote that he talks about here from Jim Jarmusch. I'm, I'm hope I'm getting these names right. Uh, Steal from anywhere that resonates with inspiration or fuels your imagination. Devour old films, new films, music, books, paintings, photographs, poems dreams, random conversations, architecture, bridges, streets, signs, trees, clouds, bodies of water, light and shadow. Select only things to steal from that speak directly to your soul. If you do this, your work and theft will be authentic. <laughs> so that's a lot, but that's really what it is. It's, it's about using other people's ideas, inspirations, the world around us as our fuel. It's what fuels us into developing our own style. Um, let's see. This is, um, nobody is born with a style or a voice. We don't come out of the womb knowing who we are. In the beginning, we learn by pretending to be our heroes. We learn by copying. And that's so true. As little infants and toddlers, you know, we copy, right? We copy things and emulate them to not, not so to speak, copying and steal from them, but we want to learn, right? When we are infants and we're still learning as children, we want to learn from the things around us. So we copy them to learn from them, right? And then we grow into what we have become today. And what we have become today aren't copies of what we were trying to be. We have become our own unique selves. So we can look at ourselves as a, a, a definition of our creative process. Yes, when we start, when we're beginning, when we're learning, when we're trying to understand, we copy things. We copy inspiration. We copy ideas. We copy color. We copy what we see. We copy what we hear, what we feel. And then we develop our own sense of self from that. And we can do that same thing through our art in our creative process and how we grow as artists. Um, and you know, that's pretty much, you know, the book again is Steal Like an Artist. It's a great book. It's by Austin Kleon. I'll, I'll put it in the, the, um, the comments, um, because this video is on YouTube. So I'll put it in the comments so that if you want to access it, but it is a great fun book to read, really easy read. Um, and it's definitely one of those number one important things that you should read uh, if you are developing your creative, your creative process in your practice. It's truly helpful. So um, what is our own style and how how do we find it? Again, like I just said, we've usually find what we are, our, our authenticity by seeing what's around us, the environment that surrounds us. We see how other people behave, right? You know, we go to a restaurant and we don't want to eat and, and behave in a way that is not the norm. <laughs> And sometimes we go rogue. Sometimes we go off and, and do our own thing, which is also okay too. But a lot of times we will just kind of go with the flow. But how do we find that flow? We see it. We see what other people are doing, right? Um, 
one thing is always, you know, so funny and we do it and I know I do it um, when <laughs> we are at a dinner party, right? And the, the host is like, dinner's ready, right? And, <laughs> you know, everybody, no one wants to be the first person, right? Because it just looks like you're greedy or you're hungry or, you, you know, no one wants to be the first person to get the, you know, start filling their plate. And then there's always one person that's like, forget this, I'm going in because I'm hungry, right? And we wait for what, see what everybody else is doing before we do what we do as human beings. So the same with our art. We, we look around and we see the environment around us and we get clues and we get understanding. And then we perform based on what we are comfortable with. So, you know, when we are engaged in the act of creating, generating ideas and formulating creative processes and, and progress, we are developing our own style. Our authentic self is being created. We just need to see it. We need to see it and experience it and feel it. I always feel our creative process is unique to us. It's like a fingerprint. When we approach our canvas, we all approach it differently. We all have different understandings. We hold our brush differently. We apply the paint differently. We you know, we, we do things differently. It's very difficult to copy someone else's work. Now, there are people that are really good at plagiarism and, and stealing and, and copying. There are people that do that, but it takes a lot of work. It, it takes a lot of practice and training to really copy someone to a T, right? Try to, you know, do someone else's signature. It's hard, right? Because you're used to doing it your way and you have to condition yourself to be able to do a signature in somebody else's way. It takes work. It's not something that's really easy. Usually we just kind of fit in our own little fingerprint, our own style. And when we want to copy something, we actually have to work hard at it. So really, in honesty, our style is right there in front of us. Again, we just need to see it, right? So in reality, there is no one else that can create like you can. And again, you just have to see it. You have to allow and invite yourself to see it. So what I think happens in our creative process that gets us caught up and that we fail to see our style emerging, what I think what's happening is that we like to compare. We like to look at the next person and compare our work. We view the next person as the way of doing things. That's the way it should be. And then you look at your art and it's not that way. So we always compare. We're scrolling on Instagram and we're looking at our painting and we're looking at somebody else's painting and we're like, wow, that theirs looks so much better. Remember the story I told um, in day one and day two about the artist felt that my painting actually looked better than hers. And I'm looking at her like, really? Like, I think the opposite. So we see things are, we, we see things differently and we hold space differently within ourselves. We are our hardest critics. We are so hard on ourselves. But we look at others and we see perfection. We look at other people's creative practice and how they get things going on the canvas and we see perfection. And then we look at ours and we see the faults, right? We don't, we see all the faults and we don't see, you know, the amazingness that we are actually creating as well because we're so caught up in what somebody else is doing. Story time. <laughs> I always have a story to tell, but this story is um, really, it, it, it tells the story of not seeing the amazingness that's right in front of you. 
So um, for a long time when I, I quit my job and I had to, you know, I couldn't rely on painting full time or being an artist full time. So um, to make extra money and pay bills, I worked at this paint and sip studio close to home. And um, yeah, I worked there for about seven years <laughs> before COVID. And um, it was a lot of fun. You know, I got to teach people. And basically what you do is I stand up in front of an audience and I have a painting and we have the painting that we're painting for the evening or the day and everybody copies me. So the, the, the theme is you're going to go home with a masterpiece just like this. And I'm going to go step by step and I'm going to show you how to paint something that looks like this. And you're going to go home with this. And I go step by step. We're going to draw a line. We're going to make a circle right here. It's going to be this big. We're going to take two scoops of white and one scoop of blue, mix that together. And we're going to put it up here about three inches down. So I got, I was really, you know, precise in um, and specific in how I would teach. I'd go really break it down and simplify it like to a, so that a four-year-old could do it. So it was Mother's Day and Mother's Day was one of our busiest, busiest, busiest um, days. And we did like this floral painting and I was teaching, it was about 50 people in the room. And I usually would walk around. I'd walk around from time to time and check on everyone and say, hey, you're doing a great job. Amazing, you know, constant positive reinforcement. And of course, that I, I would always get, you know, you're lying, you're paid to say that. And I wasn't. I was actually really always excited to see everybody's work. And I come across this woman and her daughter. And I... I'm walking and then I have to do a double take. And every so often, you know, someone doesn't copy me. <laughs> and I'm taken back by the technical skill. Most of the time I can see an artist. I, I can pinpoint who, an who the artist is. And usually, because usually if an artist would come to class, they wouldn't say anything. They'd keep it quiet. And then you'd be like, are you an artist? And they'd say, yeah. Um, but this woman wasn't. This mother, this was the first time that she had picked up a paintbrush since maybe elementary school. She had never painted. And she just came to have uh, mimosas and, and, and wine with her daughter and celebrate Mother's Day. And I looked at her painting and I was shocked. I was like, wow. And I got my assistant, who's also an artist. And I was like, look at this painting. <gasps> this is amazing. Like, is she an artist? Like, this was, it was like beautiful. Like, her interpretation of the subject was absolutely amazing. And it looked nothing nothing like my painting. The way she interpreted the petals on the flowers and the way she, it was absolutely gorgeous. I was like floored. So I stopped and I told her, I was like, you know, this is absolutely beautiful. And she looks at me all upset. And the daughter's just like, ma, it's fine. It's fine. You're doing a great job. And the mother is, she's distraught. And she's like, well, it doesn't look like yours. I don't like it. It doesn't look like yours. And I was like, but it's beautiful. And she kept saying, well, it's not, it just doesn't look like what the painting, what we were supposed to be painting. Everybody else painted like what you are, but mine looks so different. It's just, I don't, it doesn't look like yours. And I kept trying to tell her over and over again, how beautiful, like the, how she interpreted the technique. And I mean, it was, she was naturally an artist and she had no idea that she was creative at all. So she, I, I finally, I brought the owner. I, you know, everybody's like, oh my God, this is beautiful. What do you mean you've never painted before? You're not an artist. I mean, it was that good. And I finally, we finally, and I was like, you need to go home and you need to start painting 
because this is absolutely amazing and you are a natural artist. And that doesn't happen a lot. That does not happen, um, you know, that happens rarely with people. So <laughs> in the end, moral of the story is she couldn't see past the fact that it just didn't look like my painting because she viewed my painting or the painting that was displayed as the display painting as the perfection and hers looked nothing like it. And she couldn't see past all the barriers that we face, perfection, fear, the inner critic. She was allowing those barriers to um, sit in front of her and she couldn't see the amazing amazingness of what she created. She was so caught up in comparing her work to what she thought was perfection. And she couldn't see how amazing in her style that she had created right then and there. And so really important. That's an important story because... A lot of times, if you're asking me, well, how do I develop my style? Your style's probably right in front of you. You're just not seeing it. You're comparing yourself and comparing your work to what you visualize as perfection, and you're not seeing the amazingness of what you're creating in front of you. So it's really hard. We just can't see our own style as valid. We need, we need someone to validate that our work is our style. That's why it's really important sometimes to have a mentor or take an art class because a third eye, somebody else looking at your work can say, that's, I like what's going on there. This is good what's happening here. Keep doing this over here. This is good. This is nice. You need that positive reinforcement to help you develop your style. We're human. This is what we do. We compare ourselves to others. We put a, a, a badge on what we see as perfection. Same with you know, fashion magazines and models and how we're supposed to look and feel um, and age. We, we put these badges of perfection of what we think are perfect, but we, we fail to see, you know, the beauty of what's emerging right in front of us sometimes. Um, all right. So how can we embrace who we are as artists and creators and allow our style to emerge? It's there. We just need to see it. We just need to take off the, is it rose colored glasses or the emerald green glasses? And we need to just see it for ourselves. So first, how do we do this? Number one, embrace the messy and perfect journey, right? Remember I said um, in day two, I said that you need to get wonky. You need to allow yourself to get wonky and, and get messy and chaotic. We've been talking about this since day one, right? Let go of the pursuit of perfection. It doesn't exist and we just can't achieve it. Perfection kills our creativity and prevents us from moving forward. Instead, embrace where you are right now and allow imperfection, right? Allow the imperfect nature of your artistic process to exist. Experiment, take risks, make mistakes, fail, get wonky. These are the parts of creativity that can nourish your artistic growth. Don't be afraid to explore different mediums, different techniques, different subject matters. Like I did when I started, I was painting landscapes and I just went in. I wanted to paint portraits and I figured out a way to do it. Was it perfect? No. <laughs> Was I, did I need a lot of work? Yes, but I needed to put the work in to get there and allow my style to, to allow it to develop. So every misstep, every mistake is a stepping stone. It's growth. 
Every discarded sketch, unfinished painting, anything that does not make it to a signature at the bottom of the canvas is growth. We're learning from that. We learn by our mistakes. We learn what to do and what not to do by making mistakes. If we do everything perfect, how are we supposed to know what we're doing wrong or how to improve? It is growth, practice, and experience. The more we do this, the more we can gain confidence and the more our unique style can come forward and emerge and, and be seen. And so we can finally see it. All right, number two, <laughs> talking about steal your work, the book, find inspiration everywhere. Inspiration is all around us, like we talked about in the beginning of this um, discussion. From the books we read, Instagram, TikTok, movies, the shows that we binge watch, um, fashion magazines, just going to the mall, going shopping, scrolling endlessly on social media. I mean, inspiration is all over the place. Um, I can find inspiration when I go out and walk my dog and it's four or five in the morning and I'm the sky, you know, the sun is rising and the sky looks incredible and the light hitting, um, I live amongst all these canyons and the light hitting the rock is absolutely, and I'm inspired. I take photos and I look at the, the contrast of the, the sun rising and hitting these rocks and the color. And I try to go back to my studio and I try to recreate that. That's inspiration. This is, you know, what's, what's really funny is, um, ever since I was a little girl, I would keep like piles of inspiration. I would collect fashion when I was young. I wanted to be a fashion designer and I would collect fashion magazines. My dad worked at the post office. So if there were any undelivered Vogue magazines or Mademoiselle or whatever, I would, I would get to have them and I would rip out photos. I'd rip out the pages of either designs that I liked, models that I thought were beautiful, hairstyles, everything. And I'd have paper. <laughs> Piles of these ripped out magazines everywhere. My room was chaotic. Um, and I would collect these pieces of paper because they were inspiration for me. I didn't do anything with them, but I just needed to have all this inspiration surrounding me. I still do the same thing today. Not as chaotic, um, I'm a little neater in how I do things, but I will, if I'm scrolling through Instagram, I see an artist's work that I, that's really speaking to me, or there's something that they're doing that, that inspires me, or I'm like, ooh, look at that technique. Ooh, I like how they've approached this. I will either screenshot it or I'll save it and I'll keep it in a little area. And so then when I, you know, I'm working on my piece, I will refer, reference that work to help me find inspiration and help me problem solve and help me figure out things. So I surround myself with inspiration um, all over and I allow it to influence me. I'm not copying. I allow it to speak to me and influence me within my process. I'm constantly taking notes, I'm making lists, I'm constantly jotting down ideas if I see something or I'm struggling with something. I'm always writing it down and, and using that. So I have notebooks, sketchbooks, and ripped out magazines everywhere. <laughs> I, it's a little neater now, not like a child. I wish I could find, I have a photo of my room with just paper all over the place, but, um, that's where I get my ideas from. And so let me share, so speaking of me being a teenager and how it was, I'll share a little story of that and how I used inspiration um, from everywhere to create something. So um, I made, I like I said, I wanted to be a fashion designer. And so I, I, designed and sewed and made my own prom dress. And 
I used to love to sew. My my great grandmother taught me how to do it, and I was just like, oh. I I and so I wanted to make my own. And so my inspiration, I had a few inspirations. I wanted it to be gold, but I was always inspired by Princess Diana's wedding dress, and that's what I wanted to be. And you know, I think she got married in early eighties. I think. Well, and my prom was um, 1988. <laughs> so the dress, the concept of Princess Diana's dress kind of fell out of style a bit. So, um, <laughs> so I, but I wanted to use that dress as inspiration. So I went to the fabric store and they used to, I don't know if they still have it, but they'd have these huge books of pattern. Like um, they were giant books like McCall's and Butterick and Vogue. And you would go through these huge books and you would find, you know, what patterns you wanted to choose. So I went through all of them. I sat in the fabric store and went through all of them and picked about five patterns because I didn't know how to make my own pattern. So I, you know, I wanted to have the Princess Diana. I liked the sleeves of the wedding Princess Diana's wedding dress, but I wanted it to be more princess, more fitted and more of like a mermaid thing because it was the 80s and I wanted, so I picked five different patterns to give me that one dress. And that's how I made my prom dress. I literally took inspiration from here, from there, from my messy magazine clippings. And I, I Frankenstein type of put a prom dress together. And that is the story of, I developed my own style of dress by taking inspiration from Princess Diana, from Vogue magazine, from Seventeen magazine, the prom issue. I took all this different inspiration and created my own dress. It was my own style, I didn't copy. I used it as inspiration. And that's the way we can, you, you know, talking about steal your work, talking about using others, in, others' ideas to inspire you to create your style. So you find inspiration everywhere and keep track of it. Don't be scared to hoard inspiration. Um, it's, it's a good thing. It's okay. <laughs> Number, you know, the, the next one, number three, study the masters. It's not copying. Now, have you ever seen, you've gone to a museum and you've seen an artist painting, um, you know, copying one of the master's paintings? It's a good, good way to practice. Now, I don't necessarily do that, but it is a good way to understand and learn technique and process how another artist has done it. It's good to analyze their techniques, understand their use of color and composition. Um, you're not imitating, you're not copying, but you're using it as a learning device. I'm not saying sell it. You know, if you take an art class and, and you're working on a painting like the instructor is doing, um, that's kind of your practice, you know, but it's a learning device. It's a way to learn and understand, you know, how to approach different techniques and different compositions and different ideas. But remember, you're still not copying the artist. It's coming out as you. You're going to approach it differently. You're going to touch it, feel it, see it differently. You're going to understand it differently. And that is okay. And allow that to happen when you see inconsistencies. And if you say, well, it doesn't look like the instructor's painting, stop what you're doing, regroup, and, and stop comparing and look at your painting and note down, get a journal and jot down those areas of that painting that you like and you love and that are a success. Don't just say it just doesn't look like the instructors because of course it doesn't because you painted it and the instructor painted that painting. <laughs> so allow yourself, allow yourself to imitate, but you don't have to copy. It's really hard to 
copy. Because again, we're all going to say it doesn't look like the instructors, right? That's because we painted it and that is our style emerging forward. And we just need to see it. All right. Develop your artistic voice. Every artist has a signature toolbox, a set of techniques and preferences that shape their artistic language. Every artist has their favorite color. They're, they have a different palette. They make up the manager palette differently. They like to work on different surfaces. Every artist, it's like I said, it's like a fingerprint. Every artist, those, some artists like round brushes, bristle brushes, synthetic brushes, you know, the, Every artist is going to gravitate towards something different. Um, and you'll start as you continue to practice and practice, you'll find that your language and your voice will come forward too. You'll, you'll want to work on using certain colors or you'll want to work on a linen canvas, canvas rather than a cotton canvas. You'll find it more enjoyable. Like you'll find those little kind of unique things that make you, you, you might be drawn to realism or abstract, you know, you may find a specific style that is speaking to you and that you want to work in. You'll find those things. And that's by because you've opened yourself up to embracing and taking in and being allowing yourself to be inspired by the environment around you. Um, and you know, this the more you practice, this will eventually come natural for you. You know, you'll notice that. Again, you will gravitate towards certain colors on your palette. You'll notice that you use this color all the time and you never use this color or you like this or you don't like that. You will find ways to do things. There are, you know, there are a million ways to start a painting. There are a million ways to develop your sketch, underpainting. There are so many different ways to do it. And there isn't one right or one wrong way to do it. Um, but you'll find the way you like to do it. And it's not the wrong way. Again, there's no rules. Um, I'm from the school. If, if it feels good to you, do it. If you like doing it this way or that way, then do it. Don't let someone else tell you that that's not the way to do it. We do it this way. Um, you know, you're going to find your voice through practice, taking classes, painting, and, and creating a space for yourself to create it and allowing your voice to come forward. Be patient and persistent. I mentioned this in day one and day two, developing your artistic style is not a marathon, is, is a marathon, sorry. It's not a sprint. It takes time to develop and nurture. Don't get discouraged by setbacks, you know, failures, unfinished paintings, <laughs> um, you know, just periods of just creative doubt and block and just the, you know, the, the critical things that we say to ourselves, it will happen and, and we deal with that. But keep creating, keep exploring, keep pushing the boundaries, keep learning. The more you practice, the more you learn, the more you experiment, the closer you will come to finding your own artistic voice and style. Incorporating practice and play is imperative to letting your style come to the light. <laughs> Again, this helps build up your creative confidence so that every time you step up to the easel, you are more sure of yourself, more confident in that next brushstroke. Guess what? You got this. <laughs> Embrace where you are right now. I've said this over and over again. You are right where you need to be right now. Um, the most important part of this journey is just engaging in the act of creating. You are where you need to be. Trust the process and embrace it. Trust where you are. Trust where you are in your creative process and, and allow yourself to continue to grow. We can't be there today. We, nothing is, you know, yeah, some things are made overnight, but 
painting and developing a style and technique doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. And for so many artists that you see out there who really have an amazing, amazing way of creating portraits, that has taken years, years of practice, years. Um, developing your own artistic style is a journey of self-discovery and continuous evolution of your creative spirit. Embrace the challenges, savor the triumphs, and above all, never stop creating. All right. <laughs> So what is our game plan for this year? How can we see our artistic voice and style emerging? How can we believe in our style, right? That it is there, we just have to see it. So here are a few actions we can take to embrace our own creative style. Remember, it is always right in front of us. We just need to see it. So number one, keep a journal in a sketchbook and or a sketchbook. Jotting down ideas, doodling, inspiration is key to developing your own unique style. Rip out pages of magazines, keep a, what I call a tickler file, take notice of patterns, color, things that you gravitate to and write them down. Again, Number two, keep a tickler file. I call this, that's my file or my, it's saved in my inbox and in my photos on my phone. It's not, it doesn't have to be a physical file, but it's me screenshotting images, artists work that are speaking to me, that are inspiring me. And I keep them all in a little folder on my computer and I reference them when either I'm struggling with a certain technique and I want to see how another artist has resolved that and how they've dealt with that. Or I just need inspiration. I need to inspiration on developing a composition that works with my story and I need to see what works. Works. Something worked when this artist did it because I stopped and I wanted to look at it more and I wanted to study it. So keep a file of your favorite artist and use it as inspiration and support as you're creating. Number three, practice and play. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, practice and play. You have to put the work in for your style to emerge. The more you practice, the more you will start repeating behaviors and styles. You will find yourself gravitating towards color, a certain color palette, a way of manipulating your brush stroke, and don't forget to play. Practice imitating other artists in your own style. You can learn a lot from this. Number four, and lastly, just be you. Be who you are because you are unique in yourself, right? Growing up, we probably may pretend we were a teacher or a fireman or a, a nurse or whatever. We emulated what we saw. Maybe we saw our moms or dads do things and we would copy that. We'd, we'd act that way because we're learning. We're, we, we are sponges. Well, we still are. But that is what helped develop who we are right now. So be okay with you. You are amazing. Your style is there. Just see it. Just open up the blinds and see it. Share your work share your work and find a mentor to help you see it too. Because sometimes it's, it's helpful to have someone else nudge you a little bit to see your artistic voice. Developing your new, unique style does take time and a lot of effort, but it will emerge. The more creative confidence we can build, the more we can invite ourselves to see our style emerge. So I hope you enjoyed day three of this seven day challenge. Tomorrow, day four, <laughs> we are going to dive into setting up your creative space. This is really important, just as important as everything else. Finding a space, a dedicated space that you created. Now, I don't mean a fancy studio. I don't mean, you know, I, believe me, I'm going to share with you tomorrow what my space is. 
I mean a space. It can be a counter on the um, in your kitchen. It can be on your dining room table. It can be a little corner in your bedroom. It can be it can be in your bathroom. It can be anywhere. I don't mean a big giant space, but a dedicated space that you can create in or give yourself permission to create in. So we're going to talk about that tomorrow in day four. I hope you enjoyed talking about letting your unique style emerge. I hope this was helpful and I will see you tomorrow in day four of our seven day challenge and happy creating.